Now, for as long as I've been around politically in Bristol, uh, I think probably number one or number two in terms of people's biggest local concerns has been mm. transport. And there was, there was a particular issue constituent had raised with us before coming today around the two pound single fare. And they said that um, you can't change a bus on the same route. So if you're, trying to, if you're trying to get from A to B, but you need to use two buses to get there, the single fare doesn't apply and you've got to pay twice. We're, we're always looking at, is there better ways of, 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 um, of, of doing our ticketing? Is there a fair, we have to look at what, what technology is available and, 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 and how, it, how we make it all work. Mm. Because you're right, it's an interesting point about you know, network design and national bus strategies are people are, should people change buses? Do we, do we create better interchanges and expect people to change more? Well, you've got to be very careful that we don't sort of put people off by not only the, the, the change, but because of the fare structures don't work as well. Mm. So it, it, you're right um, if, if, if you use uh, more than one bus, but I think the £6 day ticket still represents very really good value for money. There was a particular case from a parent where their kid was trying to come home from school. They paid the single fare, mm. they got on the bus, the bus stops because the driver finishes his shift and gets off, mm. but the new driver doesn't turn up mm. to finish that route. So the kids get on the next bus, but then they've got to pay again in order to use that one. I mean, clearly that's a that shouldn't be happening, right? No, it, sh it shouldn't be happening. And I think the what we're doing in terms of the driver recruitment will make the whole issue go away. Um, so th there is always going to be a driver to relieve the driver when he's finished his shift or he's on a break and so so that 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 situation doesn't arise that that let that's the root cause of the problem but you, you're right the, the, the in the, in this instance the second driver wouldn't know now encourage people to, to get in contact with us because that, that's wrong someone wanted to make that complete journey so we we, we, we we should refund that so they should contact first bus directly as opposed to talk to the bus driver the bus driver will as I say, well, unfortunately, you know, we we ask them to use their discre their discretion, but ultimately, uh, you know, sometimes people you know, will make a judgment and the best judgment that they can with the information they have, and, and might ask for um, for 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 an additional fare. But someone said you've obviously made the reductions in single fares, mm. but I don't think those have been applied to weekly or monthly passes. Is there any plans to, to do that? One of our commercial challenges is that we only have, currently we carry about 75% of the people we had uh, prior to the pandemic. But actually, when we because we can see through our digital ticketing, um, we can see that actually the vast majority of the people who, the number of people who were using us before the pandemic, are using us now. It's just they're using us less often. Right. That 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 generates a challenge to the uh, uh, to operators in terms of sort of revenue. So that's why we're having to work through some of these changes and understand what those travel patterns are. So there's there's been a long running debate in Bristol about whether buses should be ran by private companies mm. um, or by the state. Do you think that's a potential outcome? If the government says after March, I'm sorry, there's no more no more taxpayers' money coming mm. your way. I mean, you're just going to, have to put the price up, aren't you? No, not not necessarily. I think one of the things that the uh, uh, the private sector can do is be much more entrepreneurial, much to really try things out. And 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 that two pound fare is something that we did ahead of the government scheme to 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 to, to have that two pound headline fare. The problems that we've experienced, whether it's the crises around drivers. Uh, in terms of driver availability, the congestion, that they will exist whichever model you operate. Mm. I think it's easy to say, oh, there's, my bus service is unreliable, let's bring it into the public sector, let's make it franchising, but it doesn't solve the problems. Mm. We've had quite a few cases, it seems, uh, where routes within my constituency yeah, they keep having buses that have broken down. Have I got old buses in, in Bristol North you have You haven't got the, uh, the the most modern fleet, and that's okay. where we would... Uh, why, why, to... why, why is that? Why, where's the modern fleet gone? The modern fleet is on Metrobus. Uh, the modern fleet um, is is often used on some of our East Bristol services because when we introduced those, there were sort of air quality issues in, in, in Old Market. But we, we have real aspirations to 
uh, to improve the quality, but also around how do we improve the frequency and the reliability and the punctuality uh, of services. Because as I say, I think when you look at the, the three and the four, we do need to improve the reliability of that and the driver recruitment that we're doing will have a massive impact in terms of making that more reliable. In April, we're using a, a whole suite of sort of new technology, which is enabling us to better timetable services which is based upon you know, uh, you know, capturing the sort of the, the data around from satellite navigation and every, everything else to actually capture the real-time running information, the history of our bus services to make it much more punctual. Mm -hmm. So the services that we're planning for, 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 for April, we're really confident where we've trialled it, we've actually improved the punctuality around by about 15%. And, and we're bringing that to the routes in your constituency in April. So and that will deal with what one of my constituents has called ghost buses, where it shows up on the app that the bus has arrived, but they're stood on the bus stop and it's not there. So presumably that will fix that problem, will it? It's 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 part of that. That that problem is a is one we're working very hard to 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 remove, and it's about sort of how the data gets transferred between the various different sources of. So, for example, the uh, the the real time information boards at bus stops. That's controlled by the combined authority. Our app is controlled by us. It's not perfect yet, it's got better, and we're working very hard to make sure that, that it is entirely accurate. There was some uh, news coverage recently that said there might be a bit of uh, some tension uh, with the workforce here. There were some people, I think they were described as a whistleblower, um, who had quoted that uh, managers are non-existent now, all seem to disappear by 3pm, and they're never there on the weekend. Have you got some challenges here with the staff? We are not perfect. Uh, you know, t take take those points about when managers are around. We, I know, for example, we've just introduced changes as part of the, how we engage better with our workforce to have more managers around at weekends and in the evenings. Um, so there's lots of things that we're doing. So you know, it, it, we are working incredibly hard with 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 all our partners, whether it's the trade unions or others, to really improve the way. Um, that and, and you can see that and the number of people who leave our industry or leave First Bus in, in, in Bristol are significantly reduced to below what it was prior to the pandemic. The services that we cut to make us run more reliably in November, we are confident that in April they will go back in. Um, so, you know, the driver campaign that we've been, recruitment campaign is working. We're hiring a lot of people at the moment and training a lot of people. It takes a little bit of time to come through. It takes six to eight, so eight weeks to train a driver. Um, so we, we're confident those services will go back in in April. We, as I say, from within your patch, the sort of threes and fours will be more reliable in April and hopefully more punctual in April as well.